Okay, now we go with the with the with the a few data about the, the project and uh, uh, before uh, I think uh, uh, we have to remember John McCreish. Uh, John passed away in early 2016, was a friend of many, and uh, it will be missed by the project. Uh, I think that uh, uh, John's heritage stays with us with the text of the manifesto that he wrote in uh, 2010. And uh, I thank John uh, for the contribution to the project. He has been a friend of many, and uh, we will never forget him. I think we, we should applaud him. And now to, uh, to what we have done during the last uh, 12 months in, uh, in uh, general. And uh, this is a map. Uh, countries in green are uh, countries where TDF members are based. Uh, as you can see, we cover all of Europe, most of the Americas, quite a lot of Asian countries. Uh, unfortunately, we are still uh, not present in all of Africa. Uh, but if uh, people attending this conference and contributing to the project have not already applied for membership, I really invite you to do so. And uh, uh, you can uh, have uh, the opportunity of uh, speaking uh, with membership committee member, uh, members. Uh, one is Gabriele that has just entered the, the room. Uh, to ask uh, what you need to do uh, to become a TDF member. Uh, it is rather important because uh, the Document Foundation is a member-based organization and uh, only by growing the number of members uh, we will grow the strength uh, and the coverage of the Document Foundation. So this is something uh, that as I personally invite you to consider if you're not already a TDF member. Second, we, for the first time, uh, we, we have a traditional uh, uh, annual report uh, in PDF uh, uh, format. Uh, this year we have a printed version of the, PDF, uh, of the annual report. Uh, if you, we have a number of copies, you can uh, have a look uh, and uh, don't take it away. Um, but uh, you can, uh, if you are interested in getting it, you can buy a copy from Lulu. Uh, it's printed on demand uh, and uh, it's uh, going to be shipped to your, uh, to your address. And uh, as I'm thanking the members, I think we should not forget the people that donate to uh, LibreOffice, uh, to the Document Foundation. This is the... Uh, the trend of donations uh, since we started uh, accounting them in 2013. Uh, it's uh, thanks to donors that we can uh, have uh, a solid infrastructure, that we can have uh, uh, a, a, a team that helps uh, people in, in their daily activity, that we can uh, reimburse uh, travels of people attending conferences, uh, and so on. So, uh, of course, uh, donate donors are, most donors are not in this room, but I think that all people uh, that are members of the project should be grateful to the effort of these people that mostly at download time uh, give something to the project. Next, uh, I want to uh, thank and welcome, although some of them are not here, the new members of the advisory board. Uh, this year, uh, we had several new members in the advisory board. Uh, we had GNOME Foundation and uh, KDEV. Uh, with this uh, organization, uh, we are exchanging the presence in the advisory board. So we will probably 
help them in growing uh, as much as they will help us growing uh, the project. Uh, and uh, uh, it is important that open source project, free software project, work together because uh, only by working together, combining our efforts and uh, helping each other, I think that we can help the growth of free software in general uh, in terms of uh, uh, visibility, awareness uh, and reputation. Uh, most of the, uh, the users around us uh, are used to proprietary software and uh, only by helping them to understand and educate them about free software we can grow our project. The next one is Canonical. I think that everyone knows Canonical uh, is behind the Ubuntu project and uh, Canonical is now a member of our advisory board and uh, in this case it's very important as well because they help the outreach in businesses uh, through their uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, distribution. And last but not least of course, uh, Free Software Foundation Europe. Uh, we are, uh, I've been to Berlin uh, to their summit recently uh, and uh, it's again uh, uh, working with them and helping them grow and helping them uh, uh, keep on and uh, advising them about their activity. Uh, I think that we can help ourselves uh, in growing and uh, getting uh, a better space for LibreOffice uh, in terms of uh, uh, penetration in the market. Uh, of course, uh, announcements. Uh, we are now at LibreOffice 5.2. Uh, so during the last 12 months, we have we had two major announcements, 5.1 and 5.2. This gives you this out. This timeline uh, gives you an overview of what has been done uh, since the launch of um, uh, the project in 2010. Of course, if you look that with the developers' eyes, uh, you might question this kind of stuff. Uh, I know but we don't have to communicate only to developers. Uh, we have to communicate to people that does not understand development and uh, uh, adding some, uh, some clues to this uh, helps people in understanding what the project has done during the last few years. Uh, so of course uh, the, 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 the picture is a lot more complex that this timeline uh, is, uh, is uh, visualizing but this is intended not to communicate to you, but to communicate to people outside the project. And uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, I think we, we, we will uh, provide an updated chart. This uh, uh, is not updated to the last three, four months, but this is the download uh, trend. We have uh, probably uh, exceeded now 140 million downloads. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, of course, if you look at the red line, this gives you the cumulative number. The other ones are the uh, monthly uh, numbers. And uh, thanks, uh, uh, I think that the, the effort uh, and the success of LibreOffice is uh, uh, the result of a combined effort of many, many components. Uh, of course, the first one, uh, are developers without a good product, there, there would not be any other activity that is deriving for the good product. Uh, on the other end, uh, uh, I think we have uh, been able to uh, gain uh, some traction from the media. I'm going to show you some uh, articles that have been uh, out during the last 12 months. And I think uh, the positive um, uh, outcome of this uh, is I think that during the, 12, the last 12 months, uh, the articles have reflected the, our message to media. So we, uh, we, we provide some messages. Uh, messages are about increased speed, increased robustness, uh, stability, 
in other cases uh, is uh, about the user interface being uh, incrementally updated and improved. And uh, for the last uh, uh, version, we uh, insisted a lot on the business uh, business uh, uh, approach. So we, with 5.2, uh, the message was that uh, LibreOffice is ready for enterprise deployment. We perfectly know that enterprise deployments are a challenge because uh, uh, we are we enter an uh, an environment and an ecosystem where uh, uh, proprietary software has uh, more still more than 90% of the market share. So uh, I think that reading these kind of articles, of course, these are only the titles, but reading these kind of articles. Uh, is helping uh, uh, companies and enterprises and organizations in uh, getting less, in reducing the number of doubts in uh, deploying LibreOffice. Uh, um, in, uh, in, in my activity in the, in the local market, so in Italy, I use a lot what is uh, being published on the media uh, to uh, help people that are deploying LibreOffice become more confident on their deployment. And I think this is an opportunity that everyone has got. Uh, if you read a nice article on LibreOffice, share it with, the, with, your, uh, uh, with your acquaintances. Uh, if you have a commercial objective, share with your customers. This is going to help everyone. We have to build a network of people that is confident about deploying LibreOffice because that is the only, is our best strength is uh, word of mouth about uh, uh, deployment uh, by people that is happy about their deployment. So these are the last one as you, and uh, thanks to the, to, uh, in a sense, to the, ministry, the Dutch Ministry of Defense that has sponsored that and to Collabora that has developed the impact of uh, the classification feature has been uh, extremely well received by the media. Uh, it is uh, quite important. Many, many uh, large organizations will ask about this feature and today LibreOffice is uh, capable of answering this uh, request uh, from uh, enterprises and corporations. And uh, I finish with my part, uh, and now is uh, Michael that will tell you a number, of, a number of numbers that I don't understand, but I know that are significant. Uh -huh. hey. Thank you, Tale. That's, that's wonderful. <clears throat> so, so this is my pet random selection, as of very late last night, of things that we've done last year. And I think this is a, a fantastic thing. I, I think Marcus isn't here, but I just want to pay tribute to his work here doing this uh, crash, crash reporter because this, it's been a long time since we haven't uh, reported crashes. And being able to get back traces out of these, not having to ask users to you know, <clears throat> install the Windows debugger, set up the symbols, whatever, but just having a good statistical uh, grasp of this, 17,000 or so crash reports already. Isn't that something to celebrate? Woohoo! You know. <laughs> anyway, um, the good news is that we, you know, we are fixing the top ones, and you know, it'll just have a huge uh, impact on quality. Obviously, we really want to improve uh, the quality of LibreOffice uh, as we go along. Here is another graph that's extremely uh, pleasing to me, um, which is that our open regression count seems to have stabilised over the last year. So. We have almost as many regressions as when we started the year. And this is a great place to be because we also created a whole load of new features and shipped a whole load of new cool stuff, right? So to actually be relatively static is good and to see that trend coming down is something. Uh, in the engineering steering committee, we watch this every week and, uh, and sort of uh, try and agonize about it, you know? So, uh, so that's very, very encouraging. And I was particularly encouraged um, to, to, to meet Aaron uh, earlier. And Aaron was like, Oh, I just love fixing bugs. You know, I, I, I just want to go and, you know, 10,000 to go, you know, which is, which is very, very encouraging. Um, unit tests, of course, it's once you fix the bug, you want it to stay fixed. So uh, it's also good to see the unit test uh, coverage increasing and uh, the number of macros and assertions and tests uh, going up over the year. Um, there is a whole load of really uh, 
extraordinary work that's done primarily by uh, Quaylorn, but also uh, other people in the team, just sort of beating back the perennial problems that come and bite us, so keeping the crash testing running and actually fixing the results of it. Uh, you know, 92,000 documents we're testing very, very regularly and you know, making sure that they import, that they export, and uh, to some degree that they uh, validate. Um, the Coverity scan, again, keeping the score, you know, out of the industry beating 0, 0.00. We actually had a whole load of new issues recently, which made this number slightly higher, uh, which is good. So new tests in Coverity uh, showing up new interesting things. Um, but, but even just basic stuff, CPP lint uh, checks, uh, you know, we, we have a couple hundred of those in the last uh, two, two release cycles. Um, and life cycle improvements, code cleanup, C++11, there's this whole load of things to make the code more beautiful, uh, cleaner, and readable, and so on. Um, we've done a whole load of things to try and make hardware acceleration more robust so that uh, we pre-validate that your uh, hardware drivers are actually going to work, or at least we crash early and then disable them. Uh, rather than waiting till later and crashing. Um, so some, some good stuff to improve uh, quality there. Um, I think this, this last uh, year has really been the year of continuous integration. And I think uh, we have Norbert uh, at the back here to thank uh, substantially for that. Uh, making sure that the, the bill is, is constantly buildable, constantly releasable. Uh, you know, it's ab absolutely fantastic. The, the, the CI stuff there and the hardware investment, I guess the sysadmins as well, Cloth is, is grinning there next to him, you know, have set up some massive hardware infrastructure, again, funded by our, our generous donors, um, to, to make this actually really, really work. And so it's now possible you know, to push your code and within you know, a few minutes, half an hour, an hour, to get an answer as to whether it, it runs really well, and more importantly, whether all these tests run on it. So we have had a whole suite of tests. Uh, you could run make check for years, but they've not been the most reliable things in the world. And some of the really nasty bug fixing there, again, uh, Red Hat, uh, Michael Stahl, and uh, actually uh, Armin at uh, TIB have done some great stuff with Stefan to, to sort of weed out these horrible race conditions, these nasty bugs, these weird locking problems, um, to make those tests reliable. And that goes together to make CI just, just incredibly better than it has been in the past. And a quick plug at the bottom for this Dev Central uh, website that shows you some of this hidden infrastructure uh, that perhaps you didn't realize was there and helps you get into uh, LibreOffice development. So, pretty. Then we've got some features. So, we, we, you know, we've obviously got a big focus on, on quality, but also uh, we like our features. I think uh, uh, Italo raved about this earlier. I, I, he missed out core, however, which is terrible because this is a new and off in innovation. Aha, yeah, here. So, uh, you know, there we go. Good man. Um, so uh, classification is good fun. And for those who don't understand what classification is, because I didn't understand it either, um, it uses cryptography but only to sign documents. Okay, so there's no DRM, there's no not able to get at the document unless you're magic, but you can prove that it has been signed off to be of a certain classification level. Um, so so it's, it's, it's very, very nice, at least that's my understanding. Miklos will give you the full details later. Um, yeah, I like this one because it's pretty. Um, I suppose we should have included some of these nice 3D transitions, uh, lots of OpenGL acceleration, optimization, robustness work uh, around that. Um, one of the perhaps underloved areas of the project has been our help and documentation. So it's fantastic to have Olivier, and I'm sure uh, Florian will tell you all of his good work later. Um, but uh, working with, I think, Kendi and Regina and Jay and, and others, have resurrected and improved this help authoring extension so that now it's easy to write your help. So when you've written your feature, please also write your help. See, Olivia, I'm sure he has a talk on this later. And also just some really nice stuff to help get people uh, involved with the help, uh, sending feedback online and, and so on, adding, adding various uh, functionality there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a completely random selection of, of things. I can't show you everything uh, we did. Um, but it's, it seems pretty clear to me that Ica uh, from Red Hat and, and Winfred have done a fantastic job adding formulae and fixing formulae in all sorts of corner cases and making this just much more interoperable and consistent and beautiful. And uh, Thomas has been doing some of this regression uh, line stuff in charting and uh, complex formulae analysis and wrapping. I don't know, Laurent's been doing good stuff. And here are the people that have been doing it. So this is individuals. Um, so every month we analyze who committed um, and this goes up, I'm afraid, only to the end of two th uh, 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 month seven. I should have remade the numbers. But um, the punchline is we have around 80 people or so, individuals, unique individuals committing every month. And here's, the, here's how they break down. So you can see the 
you know, who they work for uh, at the top. Assigned, incidentally, just means you've signed a copyright assignment, uh, uh, Wavia, or not a copyright assignment. You, you've sent your message saying, yes, I really agree with your license. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so we actually track that uh, behind the scenes, and hopefully Clough uh, you know, manages the, the wonderful database of everybody to make sure that we really know, uh, that, you know what the rights are around the code, and we're, we're doing this in a way that everyone has signed up for explicitly. Um, so those are the people. Um, so it's really good. So the great thing about this is there's a huge number of volunteers, which is broadly the green, the green magic here, um, which is fantastic. And they actually produce really quite a lot of commits too. It, it varies, I guess, depending on, on season. Um, but in terms of commit volume, so this is the commits per month by affiliation as well. And you can see we get around 15, uh, 1,500 commits a month or so. And you can see how it breaks down there between the, the various, various people. Um, for any aspiring volunteers who, who want to take on his mantle, uh, you know, his, his, his role, um, the blue at the bottom here, Parallax, is just one guy half time. That's Noel Grandin, so you know. And uh, he's, he's going to, coming to work for Calabra. So, you know, there's a, there's a hole there. So, you know, you, can, you could be that guy. You know? that's, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, doing lots of cleanup and, and awesome things with uh, you know, automated testing and Clang plugins and, and validation uh, left and right. What else? So, Italo talks about user experience as a, as a key thing. And uh, so, I'll, I'll show you some of the user experience changes we've had. Um, there's just been a huge amount of work around sidebars and toolbars. Um, You'll have seen some of these if you use a recent LibreOffice and the changes and improvements. So, for example, this, ooh, there's a laser thingy here, is there? It can kill people. Aha, excellent. Um, so, so this guy here, you know, uh, being able to, to see which end of your line's which and, you know, get, get this much more compact so you can show more uh, in the sidebars. Very nice. I, I, I can't remember even all of the things that, that have gone on here, but all sorts of properties, uh, better, better slide transitions, better arrangements of, uh, of everything. Um, Separate UX things, so some template manager things. This is brilliant to have this, this fixed because this was a, a bit of a nightmare having a very old and ugly template management thing and also the new and beautiful one. And yeah, so the unifying those and making it uh, look, look pretty is, is fantastic. Um, find and replace, you can now hide all of this, this, this stuff at the bottom. So your average user never needs to know that there's a regular expression mode because that would frighten them, you know? Don't, don't frighten users with too many options. <clears throat> before you've you know, taught them to, to love them. Um, so again, uh, nice work there. Um, even more work on user experience. Uh, Bubbly has done some fantastic uh, mentoring and, and been, her fingerprints are sort of all over this with uh, Yusuf as well. Um, just improving uh, this sort of thing. You know, I mean, look at this nice, nice palettes of, of things to insert uh, that look more familiar and really, I think, preparing for uh, the notebook bar uh, future. So. It's my last slide. So some other bits going on. LibreOffice Online, there's lots of work going on there. I'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes, but there'll be several talks through the conference uh, about that as well. Um, but this is a horrible subset of work. If you don't see your name on a slide, that's because I forgot to put it there. And if you don't see your feature, that's very normal. Most other people didn't either. My apologies in advance uh, for missing yours out. Uh, but I just want to say thank you. I mean, I, I do very, very little of this work. <clears throat> I just stand here and talk, you know. Um, but there are people out there just you know, putting their love and passion and sweat and blood and tears and, you know, debugging late at night to find that missing semicolon, you know? And, and you know, they're doing awesome, uh, glorious things. And thank you so much, you know, for all the documentation, the translation, the help, all, all the good things that people put in. So, you rock. And that's me. So, hello also from my side. Um, I actually love this kind of traditional state of the project talk because it gives the opportunity to show uh, what has happened. We've seen uh, numbers from Italo, we've seen development and features from Michael, and uh, I'd like to talk from, from my um, administrative point of view a couple of projects that have, ha that have happened and introduce you first of all to our team. Um, Michael Italo have mentioned we have uh, lots of generous donors and they enable us to run projects and to have people working on them. And uh, I'd like to give uh, a picture to the name and uh, tell you what our team has been working on in the, in the last uh, months. So first of all, we have met already Sophie. Um, first and foremost for this conference, Sophie is the gateway uh, between TDF and the local conference organizers. I think we have been running uh, conferences since, I don't know, 
a decade or so. We, we met actually at a conference 10 years ago. So uh, she's organizing all the, the bits and pieces, getting things together, um, helping the local organizers, organizing travels. Um, and uh, many of you know Sophie, um, if you're a TDF member, she's the gateway between TDF and the members, uh, travel refunds, uh, all those sort of things. And Sophie is quite active in the native language community, helping them, uh, guiding them, uh, assisting them with all tools, um, with all resources that we have, uh, answering questions. So, um, yeah, that's, that's Sophie. Then Italo, you already have seen and heard him. Uh, obviously, Italo is doing marketing for TDF, <laughs> and uh, um, he's our uh, main marketing contact, doing press releases, uh, media outreach, um, organizing the, the local press release workflow that press releases get translated, get uh, sent out, uh, manages the journalist mailing list so we can have a good outreach to the media. Um, if you're a TDF member, you get a nice newsletter each month sent by Italo. He also uh, volunteered for working on the, the budgets uh, that we have started this year, the, the marketing and the community budget. Italo is, is organizing and coordinating that. He set up the certification program for TDF and a couple of other things is done by Italo. Then also quickly mentioned was Klopf sitting here in the back. Um, he's um, primarily our release engineer and the guy ensuring that the, the builds reach the mirrors, that you can download them, um, also deals with the, the app stores to get our apps out there. Klopf's also quite active in infrastructure at the moment, running infra operations, um, uh, primarily the developer infrastructure, Garrett, Jenkins, Buxilla and the like. Uh, website, Silverstripe, that's, that's also cloth and all other sorts of things. Basically, cloth's always around when, when there's something uh, to do. A couple of new faces. I'm not sure if Heiko is here yet. Ah, oh, oh, sitting right in front of me, sorry. So Heiko is quite new to the team. I think since uh, May, working on user experience, has been uh, volunteering on that uh, before and uh, working on the user interface, running the UX meetings, service, doing, doing research, doing everything to make the user experience and the UI of, of LibreOffice better to, to sum it up. Um, we have a design block that's run uh, by Heiko. He triages UX bugs so we can be more effective and, and move forward all UX related topics within LibreOffice. Then shortly after the last conference, Jan joined to mentor new developers to help get people on board it, um, to, to reach out, to work on easy hacks, uh, to introduce them to, to Garrett how uh, the patch workflow works, to, to take them by the hand and uh, help them to get uh, involved. And uh, that's quite helpful. He's, he's uh, working also on some developer bits on, on infrastructure, um, running Hackfest, doing everything to make developers feel welcome, feel appreciated, and, and give them the support they need to contribute in the best way they can. Early this year, Olivier started. Here's Olivier. He's responsible for, for documentation that uh, contains, of course, writing uh, documentation, organizing the workflow, onboarding volunteers, running the meetings, but also, I think we've seen a screenshot of that before, work in the help system is uh, carried out to make that easier. Um, there's a wiki uh, and online help that those are all bits and pieces that Olivier is working on, on the, on the workflow, on the tooling side, as well on the content and getting volunteers. Uh, involved and that of course involves uh, style, gu st style guides, templates, all sorts of things to make uh, people working on documentation having an easier role and an easier life. Then there's a nice guy with a camera actually sitting there, Mike. Uh, he also joined early this year uh, supporting Italo in, in marketing. Mike is uh, publishing regular interviews on the blog. He's feeding all social media channels. Um, he will probably ping you at the conference because uh, you're right now working on a, a community video, I think. So he wants to get some quotes, some statements from people contributing to LibreOffice, uh, present that. And he also created the, the nice feature videos to introduce what's new in a specific version of LibreOffice. That's the work Mike is doing. Lots of, of flyers, brushes, and uh, a very successful uh, month of uh, LibreOffice contribution that we ran in May and I think will be run in October or November. 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 So uh, stay tuned with that. So um, that's Mike. And uh, then uh, new in the team is uh, Xisco. Are you here? 
Yes, Cisco is here. He will be working on uh, QA, triaging bugs, uh, be responsible for a Bugzilla instance. Also, and that's, as you see, is part of everyone's role to onboard new volunteers to work with the community, to optimize the workflows, um, to um, run QA meetings, of course, bug hunting sessions. Uh, we have been running regularly uh, ahead of new major versions. That's uh, stuff Cisco is working on. And of course, uh, by bisecting and, and stress testing uh, LibreOffice of Cisco has just started. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get all those those bits and pieces together. And uh, that's that's my role with uh, TDF. Enjoy a lot working with the team. We have, I think, a great team uh, doing all sorts of things, very dedicated, very passionate about what they do. And that's, that's what I appreciate a lot. Those are the people. And now a couple of things, just a random selection, uh, what we have been doing in terms of projects, what's still running, uh, what we have been achieving in the last months. So Italo has mentioned the advisory board has grown with four new members, which is great. The advisory board uh, is the entity or the part of, of uh, TDF for corporations to support, to exchange with the board, to fund, um, to, to get in touch with us. And that has grown, which is good. Um, Sophie has been working on translating ledgers. TDF is about transparency and we try to give as much transparency as possible on the donations on how we use the money. So we have actual ledgers published um, and translated in the wiki. Then we have come up with a nice annual report as Itola has shown this time uh, also in printed version and you can download it where we show what we have been doing in 2015 with lots of text, lots of pictures, st statistics covering all aspects of the project. Quite unknown yet is um, if you want to have more merchandise and you can get here at the conference, there's actually a merchandising store where we have, I think, t-shirts, caps, covers for mobiles and, and all sorts of things. And we constantly update and, and grow that. There is a store we can uh, show you appreciation and support for LibreOffice and, and can get some materials. If you have a nice project that you would like to run and have ideas and have people to run it and uh, just need the funding. There is a grant request option. Uh, a couple of requests that we have funded in the past are certain trade shows, certain events to attend. Uh, a dashboard um, that uh, I'll talk about a second in, in a second uh, was part of a grant request and a couple of other things. So if you have an idea that is not yet in the budget, um, we have the, the options of uh, working with grant requests. So TDF can assist you with getting funds for projects you would like to carry out. In terms of uh, budgets, uh, Norbert uh, mostly has been working on uh, not only the infrastructure, but also the budget. Uh, this year we started to have uh, a couple of buckets, like a community budget, a marketing budget, infrastructure budget, to have an easier approval of expenses if that fits into one of those categories. And uh, within next week, we will start uh, ahead of time to do that for 2017. So local communities can make proposals, what they would like to have funded, which events to attend, what materials to produce, so we can create the buckets accordingly and have uh, hopefully rather streamlined um, refunding and, and payment process. Then, of course, in uh, that's new since the last conference in, in February, a new board of directors uh, started, is in place, has been elected by the community. And uh, just today, you will get an announcement if you're a TDF member for the election of the membership committee. Um, the candidates have been nominated and then the election will start uh, tomorrow and run for a week, so you will get the credentials during the conference, and please don't forget to vote on that. The team has grown. Uh, we have uh, five new names. I introduced just all of them to you, so TDF itself is growing as well, and um, part that has been growing is the infrastructure. Michael mentioned it, lots of, of machines to do, I think, continuous integration and what sort of... I, I don't understand that kind of stuff, actually. <laughs> so lots of, of developer infrastructure has been set up to cope with the, the uh, growing demands um, that we do have. And uh, what we have uh, a nice detail, we uh, in the last days updated the, the uh, statutes to have uh, more proper English translations so you can read into the detail of TDF. And from the marketing side, uh, TDF itself has a shiny new website uh, since I think February, March. So um, we also have our, our business card in the net in a nice, uh, decent design with a new blog uh, that features regular contributor interviews the month of the LibreOffice contribution, as mentioned, and the newsletters that we do provide to our members. And then there is a couple of um, projects we don't run ourselves, but we invest in. 
And uh, one thing is uh, for the translators, for the localizers, the Poodle instance, there is an ongoing work where about 50, 60% have been carried out already to get new features, to get better performance, to get um, needed tools, I think like importing um, reasons for duplicates and, and whatnot to ease localizers' lives. That's something that we have been contracting the Poodle developers and of course will provide upstream for the wider Poodle community to participate. Uh, a dashboard is currently in the works and uh, I was promised to get an, an updated link this week where we gather statistics out of uh, Baxilla, out of Garrett and can extend by a couple of other services to see the activity, to illustrate the activity and to um, see who is contributing what, which will in the end also help our membership committee to do their work. Another uh, item we fund is AskBot, which is quite popular in user support, I have learned. And uh, we invested a lot into getting uh, multi-language support, uh, into getting localizations, a couple of features that we required, because we have, a, as you can imagine, a rather heavy user base and lots of languages deployed. This is also funded upstream and then made available to the wider AskBot community. A couple of uh, tenders are currently carried out that will make the code of LibreOffice better, provide new features. Um, you see the list here. And of course, last but not least, um, the document liberation project is quite prominent these days because the library behind it, the library DLP provides, is used by a couple of rather famous free software products, which is amazing to see that the work that we do is shared with others, which I think is uh, an, an, a very integral part of, of open source and free software. So much to that, and I see that uh, there's a slide deck coming up by Clough and Italo on the new release that you're gonna do now. So Clough, you join. I have to thank you. Thank, thank you, you, you're all great. Thank you very much. <laughs> great to be here, thank you. And then if, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to do a live release right now. Is that yes. true? So you can be, be part of an actual release taking place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we, just by chance, when we realized that the, we, we could release 5.2.1 uh, at the conference, we decided to have a kind of live release. Uh, uh, so it's... Uh, uh, there is a big red button that I will not press because it's nothing happens automatically. So that's cloth working there to to make this uh, live, and then uh, I will distribute the announcement on the usual channels. Uh, people will see them uh, just after this the the opening session. Uh, I think uh, the uh, all the non-developers should thank developers for uh, keeping the pace of uh, one uh, release every month uh, during the first few months of a major release of the major release cycle and uh, uh, keeping LibreOffice uh, improving uh, uh, really on a monthly basis. Uh, of course, uh, 5.2.1 is not specific and uh, Breaking uh, new feature is, uh, uh, as usual, uh, what the is uh, uh, correcting bugs uh, and uh, getting rid of regressions that were uh, uh, introduced, uh, uh, of course, uh, not intentionally, with 5.2. And uh, I really invite all the non-developers to make a. a, a thanks, uh, uh, an audible thanks to developers because that has been uh, our main strength uh, for the last six years and I think it will be our main strength for the next uh, years to come. Uh, uh, if LibreOffice uh, has gained uh, its role uh, in uh, the market, uh, I think it is because we have a really exceptional group of developers. Uh, here there is let's call them the core group, but there are many others outside. Uh, during, uh, it, it, it is uh, just a curiosity, but in, uh, in uh, November, we, uh, the, the number of developers that, that uh, committed at least one commit for LibreOffice since uh, 
September 28, 2010, reached the number of 1,000. And uh, just by complete chance, 1,000 and first developer was Jan Iversen. This is really, uh, I mean, it, it's a total coincidence, but it's, uh, uh, this is the, the, what it was funny because it then started as uh, being the uh, mentoring uh, new developers coming in. So it was a, let's, let's call it a sign of destiny. <laughs> that is the first one to exceed the 1,000 number, which is, by the way, a very significant number. We uh, is now we are over 60 months uh, and probably even more of uh, continuous attraction of new developers, which I think for a free software project uh, is uh, a real achievement because uh, we have never had a single month without any new developer uh, joining the project. Lowest month was uh, December 2013 with three new developers, but we have always had more than three new developers per month since then, which is, I think is uh, outstanding. Uh, and therefore, from my side, and I think from all non-developers, a big applause to developers. And uh, 